Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an effects plugin controller in Reaper. Now I'm going to be using this Korg Nano Control MIDI controller to adjust our parameters in our plugins or effects using the faders or knobs on the controller. I chose this one because it's the cheapest one I could find. Although this one is discontinued, but they do make a new one, Control 2, which is still fairly cheap. But just know you can use any MIDI controller that sends out continuous controller messages. You don't have to use this one. And if your controller requires a driver, install it first. And after that, when you've reopened Reaper, we'll go to the options menu and go down here to preferences. Then we'll go over here to MIDI devices, find the device, mine is right here, double click it, and then turn on enable input for control messages. We don't need to turn on the main input because we're not sending out MIDI notes, just continuous controller information. And after that, the controller should work with Reaper, but we need to teach it or have it learn each parameter we want to adjust. So I'm going to go to the guitar track on the effects and instantiate in my favorites, the Rea Comp compressor, which looks like this. Then we want to choose the first parameter we want to adjust. Just touch it, which makes it the last touched parameter. Then we can go up here to the parameter menu and choose learn. That'll open up this dialog where we can just move or adjust our faders or knobs to teach Reaper which continuous controller will adjust that parameter. So if I move the first fader, it's continuous controller two, or well, the second fader is three, and so on. Or if I adjust the knob, it's 14, 15, 16, and so on. But for the threshold, let's use the first fader. There's a few other options over here we should take a look at. The first one is going to enable only when the track or item is selected. So in this situation, we need to select this track for the parameter adjustment to work, which is pretty useful if we're using one type of plugin and we just want to switch tracks to see which one it controls. But my personal preference is to choose this option instead, where it's only going to work if the plugin is open and in focus, which is a lot more flexible because we could choose any plugin or plugin type and use any of the faders or knobs to control that plugin differently. But the plugin window needs to be open and in focus. So let's choose this one. There's also an option over here called Soft Takeover, which is where the knob or fader will take over once it reaches the previous point. Definitely test this out to see if you prefer this behavior, but for this, I'm going to leave it off. Hit OK, and now we can move the fader, and it's going to adjust our threshold for the compressor on the guitar. Now let's add a few more parameters. Now we could do every parameter in this plugin, but just the most important ones we're going to use. Like for me, I like to use attack, so we'll touch it as the last touched parameter, go up here and choose learn. Again, we can move the knob or fader we want to assign to it. I'm going to choose the first knob, which is continuous controller 14 for attack. And now if we move that knob, it controls the attack setting. Let's do the same thing for release. But to make this a bit quicker, let's use an action. Go to the Actions menu, show Action List, and type in Learn. There's an action right here that's going to set MIDI Learn for the last touched effects parameter. Let's give it a keyboard shortcut. I'm going to assign it with the scope set to global. This way it'll work in any effects plugin window. 
So now we can just touch, release, hit that keyboard shortcut, and it's ready to learn. So I'm going to use the second knob, which is 15. And then for ratio, I'm going to use the third knob, which is 16. Now I don't usually use any other parameters in this plugin except for the wet control, which is really the output. Touch it. I'm going to assign this to the second fader right here. So now we can control this plugin using our MIDI controller. If we want to adjust the threshold, the attack, or the release, or the ratio, and finally, the wet control, which is really the output. And one of the great things about this is we can use the same knobs to control different things in each plugin, which is why we chose that option earlier. So let's add another plugin to the guitar. Right click, go to favorites, and I'm going to choose re EQ. So let's touch the high pass filter, hit the keyboard shortcut, and assign that to the first knob. Because we can use it again in a different plugin. And there's no gain setting for a high pass filter. So let's jump to the low shelf. Hit the frequency. I'll use the second knob. But for the gain for the low frequency, I'll use the second fader. So you use the fader to boost or cut and use the knob to adjust the frequency. Let's do the same thing with the other bands. Third band, touch the frequency, third knob, and the gain, the third fader. Same with the fourth, which is an upper mid. And finally, the fifth one, which is a high shelf filter. Do the frequency, the fifth knob, and the fifth fader. Now, of course, we can assign as many as we want. But now we can adjust the frequency on the high shelf filter and the gain. Adjust the upper mids and that gain. Just like that. And we could jump back to our compressor. And because this plugin is in focus, our MIDI controller is going to adjust this one instead. But there is one problem with this. If we instantiate or add a new plugin in our project, they're not going to work by default. So if I go to my kick track and add a compressor, by default, it doesn't work. So if I move the knobs, it doesn't change or affect this plugin. So what we need to do is save our assignments as an effects chain. So let's delete this, go back to this one, grab a compressor and drag and drop it to this track, then reset this to its default. I'll choose start, which is one I saved, and save this as an effects chain. Just right click it, go to effects chains, save selected effects as chain, and give it a name. 
I'm going to name it control at the end. So remember why I saved it. Let's do the same thing for the EQ. Drag it over to this track, change the setting to its default or start. However, you want to start with this EQ, right click, go to effects chains, save selected effects as chain. And we'll name it re EQ control. So now let's delete this. Instead of adding effects right here in the effects browser, or right-clicking and choosing favorites, we can go to the effects chain and choose them from here, at least the ones we previously set up. So I could choose Rear Comp. It adds that plugin to the kick, but now we can control it with our controller. Our threshold. Our attack. Our release. Our ratio. And the output or wet knob. And we do the same thing with the EQ. Right click, go to effects chains, and choose re EQ control. Now we could adjust this the same way. It's very flexible as it allows us to use one controller to control every type of plugin on every track in our project. So that's pretty much it. That's how to set up an effects plugin controller in Reaper. Hope you learned something. Hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.